Right, so today I want to talk about Remco, but I want to talk more than just Remco. I want to talk about why he's successful and what people can do, like yourself, to get more like Remco in flat races. Now, first of all, we need to talk about Remco himself. Now, obviously, at junior level, he was winning a ridiculous number of races, and then people were like, well, he's racing juniors. Is he that good? He posted some power data which said he could do 7 watts per kilo for, for 20 minutes, which I think may not be true. But then you've seen some of the numbers he has produced recently, which have been outrageous, like 360 watts for an hour and a half. So the key question is, though, that Remco, 60 kilos, plus or minus a little bit, why is he so good at flat races? Because ultimately, if you think about the average 60 kilo like world tour rider, the best, their best suit is uh, climbing, obviously it makes sense. But why with Remco is that actually his climbing ability is very good, no doubt about it. But it's definitely his strongest part. And a lot of his wins have come in time trials and solo breakaways on flat courses. Now, this comes back to, I guess, the initial the, the like initial thought of cycling is speed. So how does Remco go fast? Okay, so we, we looked at his watts. I said he, he did about 360 watts um, in Drua Kuna Vuas, where he won um, like solo for like an hour and a half. People saying that's too high, but then it means he has an even less CDA. But anyway, ignore that. So let's say he did 360 watts. Okay, well, he, he averaged about you know, 46, 47K an hour often on these breaks. So if he's doing 360 watts at 47K an hour, on a time trial bike, you're like, that's pretty strong, but not like bonkers, like 360 watts, you would expect something like that. But on a road bike, it's absolutely crazy because, you know, he's, sometimes he was going faster than that, like 48k an hour. So the key thing is, is that it, he's, he's incredibly aerodynamic on a road bike. Now, if you, well, when you look at pictures of Remco having a pole, his back is flat and his, his hips are a real, really acute angle. And that's what I want to talk about today. Now, if you look at the determinant of time trial power, a lot of people say, and I think a lot of studies say this as well, that it's actually like how much oxygen you can get in your leg going down your femoral artery, which is basically like the, art, the main artery that goes um, basically down your legs, um, like on the inside of the quad. And obviously when you bend over, that, that tightens that, and that therefore is why generally you have a reduction of power when you're bent over. Obviously you can train that, but that's, that's generally what most people think is why you do less power in a time trial position. They don't think it's breathing and they don't think it's other things. But I would also say something which maybe people neglect and I think is probably very important. And a reason why Remco is so successful, which is hip mobility. If you look at Remco, he's so comfortable in this ridiculously aerodynamic position, which I think most riders could do for like, you know, a minute or two if they're pulling on the front, but they couldn't do it for an hour and a half. And Remco is different because he can hold that position, no worries. And he is so aerodynamic in that position that he can do good power, but not like ridiculous power and ride away from people. And you saw the same with Moritz in, the, in um, the Tour de France this year as well. He won a stage, he only did like 350 watts and he's like 70 kilos and rode away at 50k an hour. And that was again, because he's just so aero. So I think that's the key thing is that the reason Remco is so good is because he's so aero. And we can think about other riders. We can think about Tom Pidcock, for example. He won Paris Bay under 23 and juniors. Again, Pidcock, less than 60 kilos, tiny bloke. And why is he so good? Uh, on Paru Bay, which is, <clears throat> to all intents and purposes, a flat race. Okay, it's technical, which helps his uh, cyclocross background. But at the same time, most of the race is done on the tarmac, not on cobbles. Why is he so good? Again, good numbers, very, very good numbers, but super error as well. And I think it's really interesting when you think about this trend, because if we go traditionally back, as I said before, old old school, small guys can't time trial. You think about Nairo Man, can't time trial. Miguel Angel Lopez, can't really time trial. We can go even fur further back um, to like, I guess, even older people. I mean, like all the Spanish lot, Lander, he can't time trial. I mean, like Aru, okay at time trial, you know, but generally when they're small, they're terrible at time trial, which makes sense because they're doing less watts. But we look at new school boys, Remco, 60 kilos, very good at time trialing. Pidcock, 60 kilos, plus or minus, you know, obviously both of them, very good at time trialing. Danny Martinez, very small, also good at time trialing. I think what it goes to show is that actually, you can get really error as a small person, but you have to concentrate on it. And that's why I think hip mobility is something in cycling, which is the main focus of this video, is massively underrated. Because it really, if you can hold that aerodynamic position, then it's really important. Another person, Dan Bigham. So he was in the uh, Tour of Britain breakaway, I think it was stage five maybe, um, but don't quote me on that. And he was in the break, you know, 70 kilos this, plus or minus, you know, all the guys were about the same weight. Um, Dan Bigham did about 50 watts less normalized. So they all did about 350, he did 300 which goes to show you again, just like being aero is so important. So obviously being narrow, everyone knows that, but I think what, what's the most important thing is being able to hold that position and having the ability to put out your power in that position. Because let's be honest, if you do 20 minute effort on the flat, aero and non-aero, I would wage you five to 10% difference, maybe more. 
which when you think about it is huge because what you can hold for a 20 minute max effort, if you can hold like, you know, you know, that's okay. Sorry, wrong way of putting it. 20 minute max effort on a climb. If you can hold like 90% of that on the flat, then that's really, really strong. You know, like that, that would be really good. But most people can't. Most people like, you know, if they did a 20 minute max effort arrow and on the climb, it will be like massive difference. But if you can level those out so they're almost the same arrow and on a climb, then that's when you can start to win races if you don't have a sprint. And obviously Remco doesn't have a sprint. So I think what, what this goes to show though is that really focusing on the aerodynamic position is the most important and having that hip mobility that he can do because when he's in that position, it's really, really aggressive. Um, his back is flat, like it's very, very flat. But like, And then his hip angle is just so acute and he can still put out big power. I think that goes to show that it really is I mean, maybe it's genetic. I don't know how much it is genetic of your ability to power, power in that position, but I would also say it's definitely trainable. And it goes to show though that Remco, I think that's why he's a very exciting rider is because he's so small. He can do big numbers, but he's also just so aero, which I think is a really different like combination to other guys who are obviously just bigger and have pure watts for the on the flat, but he doesn't, which is why he can. he's so versatile. Because he, if you think about Flanders, for instance, he can climb with good people. He's pretty punched, not crazy, but on the flat as well, if he sort of off from 60k to go like Cheerio, it's going to be hard to get him back. And that's the thing, when he attacks in these smaller races and goes, to bring him back, you have to ride 50, 52k an hour. And most people just can't do that for that long. But Remco can ride at 48, 50k an hour. And once he has that gap, so hard to bring him back. And it's just crazy though, if you look at it, because it just doesn't make sense. You're like, well, how is this guy who's really small, probably not doing as much power as everyone else, riding away from people? And it's just aero. And I think it'll be really interesting to see more and more smaller people, I think, being able to do that when they really like switch on and realize, hang on a minute, air is the most important thing. Riding around like arms upright, but doing loads of power is just pointless. Air is the most important thing. So anyway, that's my little thoughts on why Remco is so successful, why hip mobility is very underrated in cycling, um, why you just need to chain your aero position if you don't have a sprint, because then you can win breakaways. And to be honest, you can do probably 30 watts more and go slower or just get really aero. And I reckon getting aero is just the best way of doing it. Because if you can ride just sub threshold aero, you can, like a long time, then you can just, you know, you can do, you go so much quicker than if you're just like struggling in that position, just almost dying because you haven't practiced it. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. See you in the next one.